Porto e Negócios. Apoio Maritime Law Academy. Abtra e Eldorado Brasil. Apoio Institucional Concais. Realização Santa Cecília TV. Olá, está no ar Porto e Negócios, o nosso espaço semanal para que possamos debater assuntos importantes em relação aos portos internacionais, portos do Brasil e principalmente em relação ao Porto de Santos. Esta semana, mais uma entrevista internacional. Iremos entrevistar profundos conhecedores do Porto Community System. Irei apresentar agora para vocês estes dois participantes da entrevista desta semana. Vou começar pelo Hans, que é membro do Port Community System. Hans, first of all, thank you so much to join us at this interview. I honestly believe that it will be really important for all of the uh, Brazilian terminals and Brazilian ports as well. Well, I'm looking forward to this, but also to any reply or question afterwards, of course. Thank you so much for giving us opportunity. Meu segundo convidado é Rob Jordan, que vem diretamente da Holanda para conversar também sobre o Port Community System. Rob, thank you so much to join us too here at this interview. It's a big pleasure for me, especially because I know your work and I know that you are an expert at the software and development side. Thank you for this introduction and uh, it's also very nice for me to be present here in this uh, session, especially also with uh, Hans Rook, who I know uh, uh, for many years already in, let's say, everything around the port. Yeah, true. For sure. Uh, to start our conversation, I always like, uh, you know, do this question because uh, I can share with our audience, you know, who is the people that I'm uh, doing the interview. Hans, can you tell us uh, about your professional life, you know, and share all of the experience that you have with our Brazilian audience? Yes, of course, I will do so. Well, it's a long, long story, actually. It's 49 years in the meantime. I started in uh, 71, 1971, um, in a shipping agency in Rotterdam. There I uh, got the chance to work on the forwarding agency department, import, export, well, everything you can, uh, you can imagine. And later on, because in the early 70s, no containers were there. Later on, the complete container industry came in, and so well, of course, that was also one of the topics to to get trained in. Um, from for, uh, 77, so later in the 70s, uh, the CEO of our company asked me to set up the IT in the company because from that moment on, the very first mini computers came in, so it was possible to have uh, internal, um, let's say, change from typewriter to keyboard input and those kind of things to. Uh, to enhance the, uh, let's say, the, the logistic flow already at that, uh, that very moment. Um, well, done this, uh, in the 80s, the first question came about EDI, Electronic Data Interchange. And um, I, um, I was one of the gurus of setting up the EDFAC messages with a group uh, of people in the port of Rotterdam. Um, so we realized uh, not only the messages, but also the data elements and also the EDI scenarios in EDFAC. And all those messages are adopted by you and CFAC at the moment and still in use in many, many, many uh, ports and carrier uh, environments all over the world. Well, a lot knows them as well. Um, so actually, that was uh, keyboard input, printer outputs, and then EDI. And then said, okay, now I've made the messages. So I went to our CEO and said, it's nice to have the messages, but our system needs to be coping with EDI in and EDI out. So he said, okay. Um, look for functional design of go to write a functional design for the whole industry of uh, shipping agencies and I did and it, uh, it ended up in having a five years project in Singapore. So five years up and down to Singapore to uh, lead the project over there and that was established by uh, at that moment an, uh, an IT company of the uh, MOL which is these days APL actually. So they had a lot of know-how about shipping as well. So yeah, after that uh, project, I became uh, within the Port of Rotterdam in the shipping agency, the general manager for ICT, also the communication worldwide. These days it's called CIO, but at that moment there was more the term, terminology of, of general manager. And in 2002, I was asked to join 
a small group of, of experts in the port of Rotterdam to establish the PCS. Well, look what has been achieved through the years with the PCS in the port of Netherlands called the port base. And um, uh, that, that turned out in 2011 that six major PCSs uh, in Europe uh, joined and said, okay, what we need to have is an association for network and lobbying on EU level. So um, in 2019, uh, I was retired from, uh, from Port West Rotterdam and I was asked to be an independent chairman of the International Port Community System Association. What I do for, um, well, with a lot of passion and pleasure now and at least for the coming two years. So that is yeah. in a nutshell, 49 years. Yeah, as, a, as we can see, it's an amazing background, you know, an amazing experience. Congratulations. I'm uh, so impressed about your, uh, all of the work that uh, you did. And uh, I honestly believe that I have a lot of questions to do for you uh, at this interview, Hans. Uh, at the same time, I have to ask uh, Rob, too, you know, about your uh, professional experience, Rob. Can you share your professional experience with us, please? Yeah, sure. The timeline is uh, somewhat shorter than uh, than uh, Hans, but uh, so uh, I started, let's say, in the IT business uh, at the uh, end of the eighties, uh, early in early nineties, um, and first from production uh, companies, I, uh, I I got into the the port related uh, business in uh, ninety six, when I became an IT manager for. Uh, two of the container terminals here in uh, Rotterdam. And uh, from there, um, yeah, I was a little bit, let's say, green in the whole container business. So I had to learn a, a lot of uh, uh, things what was going on. And I also noticed that a lot of things were done manually. So a lot of paper, a lot of typing in of, uh, of information. And <clears throat> at that time, there were also some initiatives going uh, around in, in Rotterdam to make sure that you have electronic communication. But uh, I, I was doing this IT manager uh, uh, function for a couple of years. And then I decided, OK, what I can do for one or two container terminals, I can do it for more uh, other logistic uh, business. So in 1999, I started my own business uh, together with a colleague. And uh, their IT partner was was founded. So I'm one of the founders of IT partner. And uh, so we are uh, well, about uh, 20 years uh, already uh, ongoing with, uh, uh, with the company. And we started more or less with uh, highly customized applications for uh, all kinds of logistics business, including also container terminals. And, um, and, and, and a lot of things that we did was integrations, integrations between let's say our systems that we had to provide and connecting to other terminal operating systems. And I think that somewhere in the time uh, we were involved uh, also in the, in the whole process of, um, of, of, of port base. Um, so we were, let's say connecting uh, to port base uh, for our customers. So, so this is, this is also why I know Hans already for, for many years. Um, uh, integrating all kinds of, uh, of systems. And um, so nowadays we have uh, a number of, uh, of, of different kind of systems for agencies, for container terminals, for freight forwarding, and of course also for port community systems. Yeah, that's uh, really nice, Rob, especially because you can help and support uh, our Brazilian market. You know, uh, all of the ports market here they are looking for integration for systems and many different uh, products. And I honestly believe that you can help them. Hence, uh, I can uh, share something uh, with you. I don't know if you know, but I call uh, Rob, you know, a God of Rotterdam because he knows <laughs> everything about systems, you know? And I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I thought yesterday that uh, one time I was at the lobby, you know, at the hotel lobby in Rotterdam. And uh, Rob, he, he was. Uh, I remember. <laughs> yeah, you were teaching me, you know, systems and automation. He's an amazing guy. And uh, I have to ask you, Hans, if I can, uh, why all of the, the, the words, you know, the port words, if I can call, they are looking for PCS, for port community systems? Well, it was discovered that um, bilateral contact between each and every party leads to misunderstanding difference in information content with the result of delays, penalties, misinterpretation. 
And um, as an average, when you count the number of stakeholders in the port, you come to the uh, quality of 40, four zero stakeholders that are using the data for each vessel voyage and cargo on board, 40. So there's a lot of people. And it has been calculated by Price Waterhouse Cooper, that was in 2002, the report was called Promise, that was for the Port of Rotterdam, that for each and every container, there were about 150 contact moments. So 150 for each container. So you can calculate now with the huge uh, carriers of 20,000 TUs, what that should mean when you have all those bilateral contacts. By using a PCS as, as a hub um, to gather the data and enable the parties to use the same data for different purposes, increase the maturity of the data and reduce time and cost tremendously. So that, that is one of the, uh, let's say, crucial points um, why ports are looking for PCS to reduce as much as possible the archiving and manual work to be done. Uh, Rob, I had to ask you, you know, uh, PCS, Port Community System, is it a product? Is it a, a middleware? Uh, what is it? Is it a hub between systems? You know, uh, as you have the product and you are an uh, expert to develop systems like that, can, can you explain for us? Because I can hear here in Brazil that uh, PCS, it's a application, it's a APP, it's a systems. I heard many different things. Can you show and explain and teach us, please? PCS is more like a platform uh, because uh, the system itself is being fed with data from other systems. It basically, PCS is not generating their own uh, uh, data because you get something in, uh, for example, from a container terminal that, uh, that, that containers were discharged. Uh, and and uh, data is then being, let's say, enriched with information from other sources and then, for example, forwarded to the next uh, stakeholder. And um, when everybody is participating in this, uh, the data gets more and more rich and you just have one truth. Uh, there is only <clears throat> one, uh, uh, let's say, uh, when a container is discharged at a container terminal at a certain moment, at a certain date and time, this is the date and time um, for that container. And that's available to, to everybody uh, who is, let's say, participating and subscribed uh, to, the, to the system. So it's, it's a kind of, let's say, it's, it's a mailbox. It's, um, uh, it's a connector, like you have a kind of um, world adapter that you use when you are traveling and you have your power plug and you want to plug it in somewhere else. Then you have an adapter that, that takes care of that. Um, sometimes, uh, uh, especially smaller organizations, maybe a smaller agent, they don't have a real sophisticated system. They, they sure. Often they are doing a lot of things manually or they are depending on what uh, their career, their principal is providing. And with the PCS, they just can plug in and maybe just they just have to enter a minimum uh, base of data, but they are still participating in the whole system. And, uh, and, and this is why a PCS is, uh, is, is very important. I see. Uh, Hans, uh, let me ask you something uh, that uh, I'm thinking now, you know. Uh, what, are, what are the best way it, uh, you use an existing PCS at the market, you know, or development by yourself? It's a mixture, actually. Um, there are frameworks that you can use, actually. But saying, uh, let's say the port-based system, and you say, okay, it should be very good for Santos. Forget about it. You place the system then in the port of Santos, and you have to do so many alterations because of governmental legislation, uh, exchanging information between the various parties, well, flows, that it costs you more than developing a system from, let's say, the, the bottom. So it's, uh, buying a system off the shelf is uh, something, well, utopia, I can tell it, but uh, I know Rob's system is, is very flexible. Very flexible. <laughs> he installed it now in, in St. Martin. I'm sure in the Caribbean there are more ports that, that can be installed with, and especially that port of Latin America, losing Asicuda, for instance, as, as custom systems, that makes it um, uh, affordable and also very useful to look at the systems of, uh, of IT partners in this case, because they developed that already and need not to invent that part of the wheel again, which is a very important part of the whole information flow. 
Rob, uh, let me ask you something after Hans' uh, answer, you know. Uh, this is one of the things that I'm thinking about. Uh, for sure, I know that the companies here, they can uh, develop them by themselves, uh, especially some uh, systems that it's important, you know, to use a, a PCS. But at the same time, as Hans said, uh, we have to use existing systems too. If the company will uh, develop them by themselves, I, I have some concerns how they can handle, you know, especially the maintenance, because it, it's a big problem here in Brazil, you know, you have to teach people, you know, to, to use system, to development systems, and we don't have here in our country, you know, it, it's, a, it's a big gap between the implementation, you know, and the maintenance process. What Hans is saying is, is, is right. Uh, the port of Rotterdam is not the same as the port of centers. And sure. you have totally different procedures. Uh, I've been there a couple of times in uh, Santos for, for other integration uh, uh, projects, especially on OCR and gate operation. But uh, so there is an, a need for customization. So what we did, for example, on our side is that we built a kind of framework uh, with a low code development. So that means that uh, you don't have to type all the co coding for a normal program. It's more like modeling. And from this modeling uh, uh, perspective, you can build modules uh, that, that, that we can connect. So basically we, we deliver a product as, as a kind of jigsaw puzzle that we can uh, put different uh, types of, uh, of end products. Um, and, and, and an important thing is that um, you, you just you don't or you just cannot uh, hire any uh, IT uh, uh, um, uh, supplier and say, okay, build me in PCS because you need this in-depth knowledge of what is going on around the port. You need to have um, uh, knowledge agree. about um, uh, how, how our agents uh, functioning, what is customs doing, how is immigration uh, related to uh, to a ship's call, for example. So, if you want to do it by yourself, you need a lot, a lot of experience and skills. I honestly believe that uh, it's a, a a huge and big project that all of the community have to work together. You know, it's uh, my view. I have to call a break. I will do it in Portuguese, and we will be back soon. Uh, como você pode perceber, o assunto aqui está de altíssimo nível. E o Porto Negócios levando, principalmente para você, tudo que é relacionado ao Port Community System. O Porto Negócios vai para um breve intervalo, a gente volta já já. Estamos de volta com o Porto Negócios, eu sou o Maxwell Rodrigues. Não esqueça de acessar o nosso site, deixar lá seu comentário e a tua sugestão de pau. Esta semana, trago dois especialistas para conversar com você sobre o Port Community System. Um deles é membro do International Port Community System Association, o HANS, e eu vou perguntar para ele o que realmente significa essa associação internacional. HANS, I was telling for our audience about the International Port Community System Association, and, and you are, you are uh, a member, you know, you are a chairman there. Can you explain what uh, IPCSA does, you know, and uh, what's your position and your work at this association, please? Yes, within the association, I'm the chairman of the association uh, these days. Um, we have a uh, secretary general called Richard Morton, who is doing the daily business day in, day out for our organization. And uh, we have at this moment 46 members globally uh, in 50 different countries. And that, that means that when you count them then together, it's about uh, 1 million plus users uh, around uh, the world wow. uh, having um, data or having uh, 50 billion messages a year in total. Uh, I would like to have one cent for each message, then I should be very rich. They are covering 250 air and sea ports and handling, let's say, the data for vessels and cargo over 500 million plus TUs, 10 million tons of cargo. So a huge amount of, of data and, um, and, uh, and cargo information is available on the PCSs globally. 
Um, the members of IPCSA are, of course, port community system operators, as well as seaport as airport operators. Seaport and airport uh, authorities, because so, some, or let's say a major part, is uh, not only handling the operation side, but also being the port authority. You see that uh, many, many times. Single window operators, well, we know about single window, which has been uh, uh, recommendations about the UN and also established in the EU in the meantime for many, many ports and governments. And uh, we have membership over for international and regional organizations. So that's a little bit, uh, let's say, some statistic information in the background. What we do actually is um, ensure that the importance of port community systems are recognized on the international and EU level. Um, we are regularly consulting them uh, about things happening on port communities, but also the other way around when we get, let's say, new legislation or recommendations from the, from the UN, we read them, we review and say, have you taken care of this or that? Because sometimes they are not 100% in line with what is really happening in the transport logistics. So we help them and we support them, but also we uh, take care that, that on UN and all the other levels like WCO and IMO, that we are recognized, that they know the PCSs are there worldwide. Because uh, when we were not established yet, before 2011, they know the Sunport has something available but we're only individuals. So very difficult to, to be a party. And nowadays we are uh, an NGO, the non-governmental organization that is uh, uh, well appreciated by all those organizations these days. And last but not least, um, one of the new things we do in, um, on, on level of PCSs is promote track and trace. We all know, you and I know on e-commerce that when you're at home and uh, you order something in, in China, you get from the very, very first moment to, until the moment it is delivered at home the information about the track and trace. When you come to the business, you're sitting behind your desk and you have to call the forwarding agent, which you apply, where is my cargo, the whereabouts? He doesn't know either. He has to check, etc., etc. So these days, with the volumes I, I mentioned earlier, um, we have set up a track and trace uh, network called the Network of Trusted Networks and the trusted networks are the PCSs all over the world. They are independent, they are transparent and trusted and neutral parties. And uh, we have no commercial influence at all. So we are able to uh, transmit data from one PCS to another PCS, but only of course when a customer of a certain PCS asks for their data. So that, that, that's an enhancement we, uh, we offer them these days. And that's basically the uh, the scope we, uh, we are in now, but it's huge, I can tell you. Yeah, uh, Hans and uh, Rob, uh, correct if I'm wrong, you know. Um, I can say that uh, Port Community System, it's not a system, it's a, it's a big uh, community project, you know, Port Community Project that uh, everybody has to work together. Basically, everybody plugs into a community. Uh, and, um, uh, and, and it helps to, to exchange uh, all kinds of information. And uh, only if you do that, then you have the possibilities, as Hans is mentioning, that you have a worldwide track and trace. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, we are going to the end of our show and I have a question for Hans and uh, Rob. Uh, first of all, Hans, uh, we are here in Brazil. We have a huge audience. Please share information with us because we can share with our uh, port community here in Brazil. I believe that uh, it's uh, really important for all of us, especially because we are concentrating our focus to do, you know, uh, PCS implementation here in Brazil. And uh, to finalize, and my last question, uh, in your view, what's the challenger to, to do this kind of implementation here in South America? Well, actually, it's in cooperation and collaboration with business and government to come to the most efficient way to support logistic um, part of the transport activities. Um, better use of the assets by cranes, implement handling of the containers, less waiting time. That will reduce the costs tremendously. Uh, logistic information on the same level and even faster available than physical transport. Nowadays, the truck driver have to wait. I have to go from one place to another place and have the document stamped and have the documents back before he can 
starts is, is, is yeah. travel. And it should be so that the logistics is there and he need not to travel from one place to another place or, or, or guests and, and get the information. No, just drive, pick up the container and go in them. That, that's the way to go. So no waiting time on the transport from one place to the other. That's uh, that, that to gain the required documents, as I said. So for, uh, for the port enhancement, the, the infrastructure. The infrastructure, you have in centers, for instance, you have connections, waterways, you have terminals, you have cranes, you have everything. But what you're missing in the infrastructure is the logistic part. And that's so important that it's on the equal level of all your assets. So all those experts will enhance the economic position of the port, I'm sure. And to tell you, IT systems, and I appreciate Rob very much, and I know that he delivers good systems, but also others do all over the world, is not the basis for having a PCS in your port. It's the mindset of the people. It's change management. It's, it's, it's yeah. uh, forget about the words, to say we have always done it this way. And to end this, um, I've been working for many years for Portbase, and Portbase is in the center of Rotterdam, and then you pass by a high school or university. And on the wall of the university, you find the words, you have to change to stay the same. And that's it. You are completely right, Hans, and uh, I appreciate a lot, you know, all of the explanation that you did, especially because I, I, I remember uh, the time, again, that I, I was at Rotterdam with Rob, you know, and I told him, Rob, we have to change the Brazilian mindset, you know. Uh, it yeah. was eight years ago, something like that, Rob. Something you, like that, yeah. And you told me, yes, Maxwell, let's do that, you know. And uh, we started, and especially at the automation side. And I have to yeah. ask you, Rob, now it's time to, to look, you know, for integration and PCS. You will be here. Will you to support and help Brazilian Mark to Rob? Yeah, sure, I will help. Um, so, so what we, for example, did is because we have customers in the Caribbean uh, region, we started our local office on the island of St. Martin uh, because, because also of the time difference, of course. Uh, we provide 24-7 uh, support, now, but now we also have uh, someone in that uh, uh, time region. And uh, we also have a customer uh, in South America. It's in Suriname, so uh, it's, it's still a little bit north. But we want to move down, um, and uh, I, I, want to be, uh, I want to return to Brazil again. And um, we are discussing uh, the products that we have, and especially with attention to uh, port community systems uh, with uh, uh, local parties. And, uh, and, and um, uh, real soon I will come up with a, with a real uh, Brazilian business partner to do projects like this. And we discussed already for what is the need at the moment for, uh, uh, for Brazilian ports and, and, and terminals, because a lot of terminals already have automation uh, sure. with terminal operating systems and so on. But the real missing piece is a port community system or uh, because you have different uh, uh, ports all around the country, uh, you, you have a need for uh, uh, different uh, port community systems. And it would be great if there are individual port community systems and, and doesn't to have to be necessarily one uh, vendor or whatsoever, but then uh, uh, create a protocol that the port community systems can, let's say, exchange data between uh, the, 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 the different ports. So you get more or less an umbrella over uh, Brazil yeah, you are completely right, Rob. And uh, thank you so much to accept my invitation. Uh, as you know, uh, you are uh, a, a big mirror that I always, you know, work <laughs> and uh, learn uh, with you. Thank you so much to, to join us, Rob, at this show. You're very welcome. Hans, thank you so much to, to join us. It was a pleasure. Thank you very much, man. My pleasure too. Bye-bye, Hans. Bye-bye, Maxwell. Thank you bye -bye, so much. Bye-bye. Uh, See you negócios, soon. Porto de Negócios vai ficando por aqui. E como você bem sabe, o Porto não para. O Porto é negócio. Mas sem negócio, o Porto para. Forte abraço e até semana que vem.
Porto e Negócios. Apoio Maritime Law Academy. Abtra e Eldorado Brasil. Apoio Institucional Concais. Realização Santa Cecília TV.